Hospital. Good afternoon, Dr. Massatelli. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, we do want to share with our audience some information about the importance of stroke awareness and why it's really important for um, people who may be undergoing a stroke to come seek care. Uh, so can you tell us why it is important for everybody, everybody to understand why stroke is an emergency? Well, stroke is definitely an emergency. Uh, and the reason being is that um, whenever a blood vessel in the, in the brain gets blocked, uh, that part of the brain is uh, starving for uh, blood and oxygen. And every patient is a little bit different in terms of how long they can tolerate that vessel being blocked before permanent uh, damage is uh, uh, completed in the brain. However, we do know that the faster that anybody can get treated, whether it's with uh, medication or surgery, uh, the more likely they are to have uh, a recovery of the stroke symptoms. And so it's very, very important that patients that are having stroke symptoms to get to treatment as quickly as possible. If somebody does suspect that they may be having a stroke, what are some symptoms that they would typically uh, ex uh, display? A really good way to remember this is FAST, which is uh, F is for face, A is for arm, S is for speech, and T is for time. And so if any of those neurological symptoms are occurring, such as face or arm weakness, or slurred speech, or difficulty creating speech or understanding speech, and then time is, is the critical factor, getting to treatment as quickly as possible. We are going through the COVID um, pandemic time period, and so uh, many people may be concerned about going into the hospital to receive treatment. So why, again, is it important for someone who may be having a stroke to call 911 even during this time? Well, it remains just as important to do it during this time as it did uh, before the coronavirus pandemic. And uh, we are treating patients the same. Uh, if, they, uh, if they have a stroke, uh, we're using all the same protocols that we did prior to the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Okay. And we also have special protocols in place just in case the patient is a person of interest or if the patient is proven uh, to be COVID positive, we can still take care of those patients. We can still do the med medication for stroke treatment, and we can still do the surgery for stroke treatment, and we can still do it safely and without uh, risking further spread of the virus. What sort of safety protocols are in place right now to help ensure that safety for the patients? Uh, so we have a protocol in place for uh, using the correct personal protective equipment or PPE uh, during the case. Uh, to assure that the staff is protected, but also to assure that we're not going to transmit the virus to any other patients. And um, if a pa you know the um, the highest risk moment of of the procedure is the intubation, and so we have protocols in place uh, specifically for the intubation to make sure that's done in a safe manner. So we've thought of all of this ahead of time, and uh, we are, we are prepared to deal with these cases as they come. If somebody does come in for symptoms of stroke and, and has, is determined to be, in fact, having a stroke, um, and they do need to go into surgery for that, um, what is the expectation for any family members or companions who may be coming in with them? Do they need to wait outside of the hospital, or what is the current protocol? Well, it's especially difficult right now for family members across the board because uh, they are still unable to come into the hospital and uh, it makes it, uh, you know, very difficult because their loved ones are being treated and they feel like they're out of the loop. Uh, we're doing our absolute best to keep the family members informed. Um, whether a patient comes in uh, for, you know, an em emergent um, appendectomy or, or for a stroke, it's still the same. You know, the patient will be taken to surgery and then we'll touch base with the family afterwards. Specifically, specifically with stroke, you know, these procedures, if, if it does come to the procedure, can be as quick as 15 minutes and they can be as long as an hour. Um, and so um, the family uh, just has to understand that, you know, we're doing our best and uh, we will uh, 
we'll, we'll keep them in the loop immediately when the procedure is completed. Well, is stroke something that can be prevented? And if so, what are some of the um, lifestyle factors that can be considered to try to help control stroke? Sure. Well, um, yes, stroke can be prevented. It also depends, you know, what the the source of the stroke is. You know, some strokes arise from the heart and end up in the brain. Uh, other strokes arise in the blood vessels of the neck or the head and then affect the brain. And so it somewhat depends on what the source is. But in general, um, eating healthy, not smoking, probably not smoking is probably one of the best things you can do for your health. Um, if you have high blood pressure, taking your high blood pressure medications. If you have diabetes or high cholesterol, taking those medications. Yeah, those, are the, those are the big things. Exercise, those are all the big things that uh, will help with both uh, heart disease and uh, cerebrovascular disease. Dr. Massatelli, is there anything else that we may need to share with our audience to let them know that, um, again, st stroke is an emergency and, and because of that, it, it, timing is so critical. Is there any other information that we need to share with our audience about this topic? No, I just, uh, we, as we discussed, the big thing is that, you know, stroke is going to continue despite coronavirus. In some places in the country, it's even increased, like New York. And so we're ready uh, and able to take care of that. And patients should have no hesitancy for coming in um, when they, uh, if they have stroke-like symptoms. Dr. Justin Massatelli, thank you so much for your, for your time. We appreciate your information on this very important subject. And uh, for our audience, if you have any other questions or need any other information, you can find out more from baptisthealthsystem.com or for more up-to-date information, you can visit us on our social channels on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn.